Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about narrative shots. What are narrative shots? How to make narrative shots? What are not narrative shots? And maybe what limit we might face as virtual photographers opposed to traditional photographers. So let's dive in. The idea of this video came up after I posted a set of shots from Bulwark Falconia Chronicles on Twitter. So it's an indie game published by Wired Productions and it's just a one guy made game. And uh, the developer actually commented this. These are really quite narrative, love that a lot. So I answered, this is quite the compliment. I always aim at this. Thank you so much. But then it got me thinking, like, do I really always aim at this? I mean, what is even a narrative shot? Uh, so I tried to think about it. And uh, today's video is kind of my conclusions uh, about this. So if you know more uh, about this than I do, which is totally uh, possible, please uh, drop a comment, open the dis discussions in the comment sections and, uh, and yeah, help me learning more. Uh, because that's what we like to do here. So first of all, what is a narration? A narration, it's telling a story, right? So what is a story made of? It's usually something that has a, a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, three elements and, and that's, uh, that's what creates the, the chronology and uh, unfold the actions or the events. But that's the tricky part, right, for photographers, virtual or traditional, that feeding three or two elements that will create this chronology in one single shot is pretty hard. So I think the key here is to either have visual elements that um, literally show the different steps or snapping a moment in between them so they are implied instead of shown on screen. We'll see some example in a minute. Uh, but first, I'd like to evacuate what I think are not narrative shots, despite fitting the, the description on paper. So if you think about it, right, you, you could argue that any snap really kind of tell a story. Take this butterfly, for instance. It's flying around peacefully. It came from the right. It goes to the left. There's a beginning to its journey. It will have an end. So that's a story, right? But that's the thing. Those elements of the story are not present in the shot, not even implied actually. So I definitely wouldn't call this a narrative shot. Yeah, you can put a narrative on the shot. You can create uh, a story from the shot, but you can do it also with this samurai, right? This samurai is like a lonely Ronin and he's contemplating before the next fight or whatever. But you can tell this story because movies and mangas told you this story a lot of times before. Not this shot. This shot is just about composition and silhouette and framing and stuff like this. So, not narrative shots. Action shots, uh, if you look at action shots, yeah, you might think they are quite narrative because they do tell the story of uh, an action and usually you, you have the different elements of before and after. Look at this one. So you understand that the fight started, you can see the action of the slap, you can even see that the guy is already prepared to parry, so you can imagine the following step and um, yeah, yet. I feel like this narrative is too short. It's, it's too centered on one single action that is part of the actual story, the game story, the, the, why this guy is fighting this boss and stuff like this, but it's not in the shot. So yeah, it's just an action shot. It, it, it shows one action. I, I think it lacks a bit of depth. Uh, in, the, in the, the story. So how to make one, how to make a narrative shot with depth in the story and stuff like this. You can, you can reach this depth with emotions, for instance, uh, but it's, it's kind of tricky. Look at this iconic shot. It's, it's a traditional shot, not a, don't, don't stop to comment, uh, wow, graphics. <laughs> So it's, it's a shot called Migrant Mother. It's by Doth Dorothea Lange. And it does convey the story just by the look of the woman, right? Um, the relationship with the kids 
that you can imagine and of course the title of the shot helps create a, a story but it's it's pretty rare to be able to get such a shot in virtual photography right i i mean you can but you will probably have to play a very specific story that you will be able to use to create your narrative shot so i did this in detroit become human so that's actually almost the same story uh, i'd say but that's because the game told this story and I, I captured it you know so it's not really me creating a narrative shot it's me using a narrative to make a shot that tells the story I, I think you 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 can feel the difference so in traditional photography of course uh, viewers share the same world as what they watch uh, what the picture is uh, portraying so it definitely helps ident identifying yourself to the situation and it helps creating a story just by this look at this other super famous shot from robert duano it's called le baiser de l'hôtel de ville <laughs> with the english accent that i don't have um yeah it is definitely a, a, a narrative shot but why you could say that there isn't any element implying the beginning or the end of their story right i think it's more because how we cre we can relate to them because we probably have been in love once this shot is not the story of their kiss it's the story of every kisses i i guess but that's that's not it that's not exactly what makes the the great narrative here look how the motion blur on the other people around build the narrative here so we understand just because of this blur so we understand that the couple stopped in the middle of the crowd right they are fully centered in the frame too so they are in their own world and it focuses on their love as the story itself composition and dove settings are keys to the narrative aspect here right and that's something we can use uh, in vp as well so back to the set i posted and that started all this uh, analysis out of the three shots uh, two could be seen as narrative to me so this one and this one so the first one uh, probably because of the doff and uh, the relation we can create between two very separated elements the um, the guy on the bird that is already quite storytelling if you ask me <laughs> um and the city that he's leaving or protecting or whatever well the position of the guy shows that he's not attacking the the city for instance so that's also an interesting way to build the story it's by positioning your elements properly so it works uh this relation the doff making it you know uh, the guy is leaving or whatever but i think it works even better on this shot so here for once i i actually did it on purpose i wanted to tell the story of an exodus um an exploration travel an expedition if you will using the fleet of ships going all in the same direction but above everything uh, using the two stars my idea was that putting the fleet between them it would kind of illustrate the idea of traveling and of starting point and destination so obviously they are not traveling from that specific planet to that specific uh, sun but the notion of leaving a place to reach another one is in the shot and um yeah i think it helps also aspect ratio uh, going 21 per 9 of course helps because it it uh, gives more time to the travel itself by making the scene actually longer you, you know composition is the main thing that will bring the narrative feel into a shot so check out this one i tried to place the different characters in order to tell the story of a bodyguard um protecting a person hiding so choosing the right character pose first then framing it so you should if it works you should see first the bright part where the action is happening first right then having your attention drawn to the person on the right and then it gives everyone in the shot their respective role uh, in the story and then therefore the the story unfolds so i think narration through composition can be tricky also and very easy to miss and i actually have the perfect example for this check this out 
So here's a shot I probably imagined as narrative when I took it. The character swims between two river banks. We can imagine where he came from, where he goes to, etc. Right? But first mistake, the guy isn't even centered. <laughs> Second mistake, uh, the sun takes a lot of attention and so are those red trees. It, they, there's a lot happening. The, the little guy is literally drawn in the shot. So yeah, I guess it, uh, it's a way to tell the story, but that's not the one I wanted to, to tell. Now check this shot I took later with the same ID. Here it works much better. But why? Well, first of all, the balance. Uh, the guy is centered, finally, and the two banks are equally displayed. The perspective leads right to the guy and it makes the traversal the main story here, not not, not the, the landscape or whatever. Another way to bring some story inside your shot is uh, the, to find a detail, the, the proper detail that will tell the story. This popcorn box works well, um, even more so because it's clearly identified as an isolated and insignificant detail in the game's world itself. I made sure of that by keeping the protagonist passing by clearly in the shot, play, playing with the, the colors and the doff. So this popcorn box is telling a story by itself. A past story, if you will. Uh, you can also create a narrative by snapping a moment in between important phases of your, your story. So in doing so, <coughs> you'll make the different steps preceding and uh, following the action uh, exist in the mind of the, um, of the viewers. And then the story will uh, happen. I think it works pretty well in this shot. So we are not in the fight yet, we can feel it's about to happen. You can also imagine how those troopers appeared up there getting ready to jump at the Jedi and stuff. So it's really about the story of their, the relationship between the hero and the, the antagonist, right? It's not just this battle, it's a story of the Jedi's against the troopers and um, nothing happens in this shot but everything is about to happen and because you know it, the story exists. Uh, last last tip I could uh, think about is uh, eye contact. So we talked about how traditional photography has an advantage, uh, especially when it comes to portrait, because we can relate to the, the, the character because we know the world, etc. But it's harder to get in virtual photography because uh, characters are more scripted and, you know, um, I think if you pair uh, an eye contact with an action that is about to happen, for instance, it can create a relationship with the, the, the viewer that will make kind of a story. Uh, I tried this in this shot uh, by snapping the moment right before Jesse turns off the light by pulling the, the pending switch. I thought that including the viewer by making her look at him directly would help the storytelling you know not not the not a story about her or the switch itself but really how you will feel yourself once the 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 light is out so i'm not sure it works perfectly here but i think it's a good idea to dig and um, and uh, to try to build on but the riskiest thing with virtual photography though is that if the viewer doesn't know the world you're portraying, they might miss a bit of information to, to create the story. Um, like in this shot, for instance, I don't know if this enemy vanishing would work as well for me if I wasn't aware of the, the game, uh, that this is a vanishing effect or whatever. So you really need if you really want to to focus on narrative i think you you have to think about speaking to the most people possible um you have to make a, a kind of a universal story to to make it storytelling uh, not too specific uh, otherwise you will fall into the action shot or just a cool visual uh, effect shot there you go. Uh, that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know what you think about the new format, first of all, and also about narrative photography. Do you do some? Do you try to do some? Do you have any other tips that I didn't cover here? 
and that I would love to hear because I, I like to learn stuff. So drop that in the comment section, of course. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, keep snappy.